In this video, I want to show you how easy it is to decode the Flask user session without having the special key that the server uses to encode it. This is so that you understand that the, uh, the cookie-based Flask session is not a good place to store secrets and any kind of information that you don't want your users to see. So for this, I, I wrote a little example application that uh, allows you to guess a number. The server thinks of a number randomly, and then you have to guess it. And I coded it so that the server puts uh, the, uh, the number it, it chose in the user session. So here I, I can type a number, and it will tell me if it's right or wrong. So to access the user session, I'm going to open the uh, Chrome debugger and go to the Network tab. So I'm going to send another guess so that I see uh, a new request. And now I can look at this request, and here is the cookie, the session cookie. So what I can do with this is copy the first block of data all the way up to and not including the period. So right there, this is the session payload. So I'm going to copy this. And now in a Python console, I bring uh, the uh, base64 package and you are going to see that this is uh, this is just a simply uh, base64 encoding. So I say uh, base64 uh, URL save b64 decode and then the payload. Now base64 normally requires padding at the end. You, you have to have strings that uh, when encoded are uh, in length a multiple of four. Uh, Flask removes the padding, which are uh, equal signs that go at the end. So, since I, I don't know and I, I don't really care how long this string is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to append three equal signs, which is the maximum padding a string can have in Base64 encoding. So, by adding three equal signs, I make sure that there's enough padding to, uh, to, to make Base64 uh, happy. The, the Base64 package needs this. So there you go. I decode this, and you can see a uh, JSON uh, rendering of the user session. You can see answer is the number that the server thought of. So I'm going to say now 7. Now I know that that's the correct number. And you, you can see that uh, it, it, it was the right one. So this is a, this, the simple case where the user session is small. Uh, but there's there's another variant that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to run a slightly different version of the same application now. And refresh. And now you can see that this this is a longer session. I, I just put some extra uh, filling stuff just to make the session bigger. Uh, but other than that, it's the same application. And when the session is large enough, uh, Flask compresses it. So it uh, uh, decides to uh, save some space and uh, add compression in the mix. So you can tell that the session is compressed when you see that the first character in the payload is a period. So that tells you that the session is compressed. So the, uh, the procedure is about the same. You need to go all the way to and not including the period. Copy this and here we need to import uh, zlib as well and now the process to decode the session requires two steps. So we're going to say zlib decompress of the base64 URL save base64 decode and then paste the payload, add padding for safety, and close. And I fix my mistake. 
and there you go. So this one, you, you can see I added some uh, some stuff, but the uh, the correct number in this case is going to be one, and and then you have uh, some other stuff in there. So I enter one, and I win the game. So uh, in case you you wonder, um, the session has two additional components. So the period acts as a separator between the different sessions. The second component is the expiration date of the sessions. Flask encodes an expiration date um, in uh, in this short uh, payload, and then finally. The last portion is the signature. So this is very important. You may be wondering if the session is open to anybody who knows how to look at it, then how do I prevent uh, hackers from injecting their own uh, data in the session? And uh, that's actually not possible because of the signature. If, if I went to do the reverse operations to, say, inject in, in this application, I could inject my own selected number so that I can trick the server into always picking the same number, then uh, I, I will need to generate a new signature. A any changes that I make in this portion will trigger a change here. And to know what's the signature, I do need to know that special key that only the servers know. So it's really secure to uh, to assume that the client will not be able to change the data in the session, but it, it's incorrect to assume that the user will not be able to see it. It's actually almost uh, available unencoded in, in plain sight. Anybody that knows a little bit can see it. So I, I hope uh, you, you find this interesting. Uh, you, you can see in the blog article that comes with this, uh, with this video some more information and uh, you can also see the code that I use for this example if in case you want to play with this yourself.